most creatives falsely assume that clients want you to spend more time working on something and therefore are working harder and earning your money. When in fact, what they care about is saving time to get something done faster while getting the desired outcome and result that they're looking for. So first and foremost, they want the outcome to be there, but if they can get it delivered quicker, it's worth more to them. They will actually pay more to get something done in less time. And this is true in almost every aspect of our life. Like if you want to cut the line, if you want to avoid the line at Disney, there's a special pass that you can buy for that. If you want premium seating at a game, you can pay for that. So, And, and also if you want to board first on an airplane, it's called first class and you can pay for that. And so oftentimes we get messed up in our mind to think that, well, if I work on this for more hours, the client's perception is this going to be more valuable to them. When in fact, most clients just want to get the project done as soon as possible. Think in your own life. Think about any time you've ever had a problem. Would you have paid more to get it done faster or pay more to have it done slower? Like right now I'm talking and delivering this course. I want drapery so I can control the lights in this room. And if the vendor could deliver to me faster, it would be worth more to me. And even if I didn't pay more, I would be a happier customer to know that, my gosh, the turnaround in this is so incredibly fast, high quality work, plus speed and efficiency in delivery, saving me time, allows me to concentrate on my next set of problems. This is why it's important for you to develop systems and protocols to be as efficient as possible while maintaining the quality of your work. Here's a little tip that I saw uh, none other than Aaron James Draplin do. And I thought it was really kind of remarkable in terms of saving time. And it showed that he does this often. So anytime you ever watch Aaron work, you'll see that he has mock-ups ready to go built into his palette in Illustrator. So a t-shirt, a cap, an apron, or whatever else he's used to designing tchotchkes for or whatever, he has that built into his library. And so when when he's he's demonstrating how to design a logo. He's not searching on his hard drive for the file. He's already built it into to his palettes so that he can just quickly pull them out and drop the logo in. This is one kind of way of being more efficient with your design and showing that you're a professional, that you've done this many, many times before. So if you just think of that example and look across the entire spectrum of the things that you do, try to systematize as much as you can so that you're spending more of your creative thinking power in, in the work itself and not looking for assets. And it's like, oh my gosh, where's that file? I can never find it. Let me give you two pro tips to help you stand out from the competition. Number one is when you're talking to clients and you're still in the onboarding process to get them to sign on the dotted line, it's super important for you to follow up with an email to summarize the key points that you've talked about. I gotta tell you, this seems so obvious and so simple to do, but yet so few people do it that when you do it, it's going to be like a breath of fresh air. Like, wow, this person captured everything that we wanted to do and they totally get us and they're super clear. If this is what it's going to be like to work with them, I can't wait to sign on the dotted line. And I do this for their benefit and I do it for my own because if you're talking to five, 10 different clients a month, you're going to forget what's important, but at least you can go back and look at your emails and say, oh my gosh, this is what we agree to. This is what's important. So that if the client says, yep, we're ready to sign on the dotted line, you can go back to that document and not be fumbling around with like, where did I write that note? It's shared between you and your client. One additional tip to that is to make sure you include the line. Did I miss anything or would you like to clarify anything? That opens up the invitation. You have to remember a previous uh, point that we made was the client's time is super valuable. The fact that you took notes shows that you value their time and also, the more time they invest in you, the more likely they are going to proceed with working with you. It's a good sign when clients interact with you. Tip number two is oftentimes clients will say, um, I'm not ready to purchase right now or I'm still thinking about it. Can you send something over so I can review it with my team and maybe the creative who couldn't be on this call today? And you're like, well, what do I send? And so you send them a Dropbox link with a bunch of loose files, maybe. You might send them to a website page, but none of those things communicate that I'm a professional, I've done this before. So what they're asking you for is a capabilities deck. And you should have one prepared already that from time to time you tweak, like every three to six months, especially when you can update it with new relevant projects. What I have is a master's capabilities deck 
with a whole bunch of different projects. And then I go in and I curate and select specific ones that are relevant to the client. So I'll probably pick three. So in my capabilities deck, I will show relevant work. I'll talk about the problem, the solution, and the impact. And I will include bios on my team and the services that we provide. And sometimes I'll include like a price sheet outlining the services that we do with a price attached in terms of like broad ranges. And this is a good standalone document that's well-designed, great topography, brand is on point, well-written, colors are all there, contrast, great. And when you send this through, they're like, wow, this is such a professional company. They have a whole team. Here's what they do. This is their process and this is the work that we might do with them. You might also include things like testimonials and you only need a handful of those, like little quotes, and you might include a logo quilt, a grid of logos of companies you've worked with or for. You'll want to do this because most creatives neglect to put something like this together. And if you want to rise above the rest, spend the time, energy, and effort to put something professional together. 